Good morning. We just practiced meditation together. Nowadays, many people practice and discuss the benefits of meditation. We can find uh, countless benefits of meditation throughout the one Buddhism scripture. The effect of meditation can be summed up in terms of freedom of mind. However, just sitting on the cushion for hours does not guarantee that you can obtain these benefits. In order to enjoy the benefits of meditation, we need to practice meditation well. How can we meditate well? There's a Kwan, a person who practices well is not separate from the true nature. What is this practice which is not separate from the true nature? Shakamuni Buddha, Enlightened Masters, and our founding master Sotesan had all attained freedom of mind. I would say they were not separate from the true nature. Master Sotesan explains its meaning this way. A person who is not separate from the true nature is free of attachment to discrimination even when active and for whom discrimination is properly regulated even at rest. This is called one suchness in action and rest. This is the model and standard of our practice. Whether in action or at rest, we have to keep the state of one suchness. One suchness describes the state of our true nature which is ever calm and ever alert. A person who practices well always keeps his or her mind ever calm and ever alert. How can we maintain our mind ever calm and ever alert in action and in rest? Let me ask you a question. If our true nature is originally ever calm and ever alert, why do we need to practice meditation? Why is it that we cannot always keep our original mind? What is the obstacle? The number one obstacle is thought. Thought is created by the mind. We are supposed to use our thoughts when a thought is needed, not be a slave to them. We human beings struggle with the thoughts and hardly have freedom from them. There are two kinds of thoughts. Thoughts that arise spontaneously and the thoughts that we are create. We have difficulty in controlling both. To attain freedom and peace of mind, it is critical that we learn how to let go of our thoughts. This is the key to the practice of one suchness at rest. The most important thing in practicing one suchness at rest is to be aware of the thoughts 
that arise spontaneously, then we can maintain our alertness within the calm. We practice sitting meditation for 30 minutes today. How was your mind? When thoughts arose, did it bother you? We practice sitting meditation to rest our mind. Even though we want our mind to rest, thoughts arise spontaneously regardless of our will. That is natural. There is nothing wrong with the thinking itself. The problem is that we are distracted by our thoughts. When a thought arises, we can just be aware of it, then let it go, instead of being pulled in and distracted by it. By letting go of each and every thought this way, our mind can rest in one suchness. If we keep chasing or being hijacked by our thoughts, then we cannot rest our mind. We are not free from thoughts and are separate from the true nature. We need to practice cultivating one suchness of mind when we are at rest by even letting go of thoughts that arise spontaneously. Let me share my recent uh, experience of this practice. One day I was relaxing, sitting on the deck of a diamond house, the minister residence. You can see Elon Hall from there. I saw a person coming out of the Ilwan Hall and then saw the person enter the building again. As I said, I was aware of what I was watching but did not engage in thoughts of that person coming and going. When I observed my mind on the meditation cushion, it is just like that. I am aware of a thought coming and going, but I do not engage with it. When we practice sitting meditation, there is a quiet before a thought arises. Be aware of this state, then observe your mind when a thought appears and passes away. Just observe your thoughts instead of engaging with them. Do not try to remove or resist them. If you notice that you are lost in your thoughts, simply note this and return to observing. Thoughts will just appear and disappear and the mind will be alert within the calm. This is why we practice sitting meditation every morning and every night. When we wake in the morning, at the moment, we are aware of one suchness. We seek to nurture one suchness by practicing sitting meditation and at bedtime. We practice one suchness by letting go of our thoughts. We can then rest our mind whenever we choose. We can let go of our anxieties 
and worries and obtain peace of mind. We can be free from thoughts that arise spontaneously regardless of our will. That is the practice of one suchness at rest. Let us now talk about one suchness in action. The key to one suchness in action is practicing awareness of thoughts we are creating now. We are fully aware of what we are doing now, then our mind is concentrated, perfectly focused on what we see, hear, speak, and think. Our mind can attain ever calmness within alertness, and we act with we can act with awareness and calm. It is not easy to always be aware of what we are thinking and doing. We chanted Heart Sutra and Iron Sang Bao today. When we chanted the sutra, how was your mind? Were you aware of your voice? Did your voice and your mind become one? When we practice chanting meditation, we are supposed to be aware of our chanting voice. But even though we try, our voice and mind may not be in sync. This happens when our mind engages in thoughts, then our voice and our mind become separate. When this, this separation in our mind, our mind no longer calm and alert. We need to be mindful of what we are doing from the beginning to the end. This is a wonderful practice of a meditation in action, the practice of a cultivating one such in is in action. When we see, hear, speak, and think, with this practice of concentration and focus, we are not disturbed by our thoughts. Our mind stays in each ever alert and ever calm state, no matter what we do, see, hear, or think. Those who practice this way maintain this, their true nature and practice with sincerity both in action and in rest. They can rest the mind by letting go of all thoughts when they choose. They have the freedom to be mindful of what they are doing without being disturbed by thought. They value this practice and know it is an authentic and the most important practice. I would like to close my talk by sharing a conversation that I had with Master Seung San a highly revered one Buddhist minister who passed away last year. When he was 90 years old, I visited him and asked, how are you doing these days? He smiled and said, I am very busy. I did not understand this because he was retired, he was 90 years old and did not seem to me that he had many things to do. So I asked what he was busy doing. He said, when I lay down in my room at rest, 
I am always busy with letting go of thoughts. When I walk outside gardening, I am always busy being mindful of what I am doing. I don't have many days left to live. I am even busier being mindful now than when I was younger. When certain is in action and, re and at rest is a lifelong practice that will bring you to your true nature. Thank you. Thank you.